just to kind of end up here, I wanted to get kind of specific with certain pitch types, but also I wanted to touch on this, this idea of seam shifted wake and explaining that concept to like a 10 year old, because it's, it's something we've broken down quite a bit here on, in our videos, but there's still a lot of confusion around exactly what seam shifted wake is. Maybe it's just cause it's a, you know, kind of confusing term. Um, how do you explain the concept of seam shifted wake to a 10 year old? And then what would be one or two tips you would give a 10 year old, a 12 year old, it doesn't matter the age if they're trying to explore this this world of like seam effects on, let's say a sinker. So my favorite analogy, I was able to successfully <laughs> develop the seam shifted wake with a lot of 10 to 12 year olds. Um, but the way that I go about explaining it is I, I try to use a common object that's a little more, uh, um, that they're a little more aware of. And so what I use is an airplane wing. And so, you know, when I tell them like, when you go on an airplane, how do you think this big old heavy airplane full of people goes up in the sky? And it's a concept called lift. But really all it is, is you have the bottom of the airplane wing is, is flat and the top of it is curved. So that when the airplane's going fast and the air is coming over the wing, it has to go a further distance over the top of the wing because it's a curved path. And so the air above the wing gets spread thinner, the, the air molecules. And so anytime you have low pressure, relative to high pressure, the air underneath the wing is just going straight past, all of a sudden it pushes the airplane up. And so the same thing happens on a baseball. When you have a, a flat side of the baseball, which is like the bottom of an airplane wing, and then you have a seam on the edge of the baseball, which is like the top curved part of the wing, the air going over the seam has to go over that speed bump and it gets spread a little thinner. So you have low pressure on one side of the ball, you have high pressure on the other side of the ball, and so the ball tends to go in the direction of the low pressure. It's it's how wind works. It's how you know weather systems work. They go from high pressure to low pressure. And so when I use that airplane wing analogy, they start to understand it because they're sitting there trying to process, well, how does an airplane fly? And once they make that correlation, then they're like, okay, if I can do that same thing with a baseball where one side is flat, one side has a curved or, or kind of bump on it, now all of a sudden that's what I'm trying to achieve. And as long as you're using some kind of higher frame rate camera, I mean, iPhone is borderline, but you know, there's some, you know, you don't have to go full edutronic. Um, using something as a reference, they can actually start to try to achieve it. And not every pitcher is a candidate to do it. Um, but for those that are, I quickly tell them, hey, I think you're a candidate for a seam shifted wake. So I give them that analogy. And then once they actually see it in action, you get this big smile on their face because all of a sudden they see way more movement and later movement on their pitches. And it's it's just a really fun process because I, I call it a physics trick is because that's really what it is. And now they feel empowered that they know something and can do something that other pitchers can't. So what's one tip you would give a kid who's interested in learning a seam shift wake sinker? Just trying a one seam grip or, you know, looking at their, just getting a slow motion camera and seeing how the ball comes off his, comes off their fingers, or just trying a generic two seam grip. Like what's one thing they can try to see if that's even something that might work for them? Probably the easiest way is either draw, I mean, similar to those balls over there, uh, you know, draw like a quarter size black circle on one side of the ball because you need a two seam orientation. And so if, if when you're looking at the ball flying towards home, if you can see the black dot facing you a little bit, you might be a candidate for a seam shift awake. And so uh, the other way is to just draw a line around the equator of the ball vertically. And if it's spinning and it's a little tilted to the side, it's not right in the middle, you might be a candidate. And so there, there is an exploration element to it um, because a lot of pitchers that do it aren't linear pitchers. They actually are more rotational pitchers. You know, you see Logan Webb, Brandon Webb, Greg Maddox, like Tom Glavin. A lot of them are very rotational in nature. They're not just like heavy linear, like Nolan Ryan or Tom Seaver or Spencer Strider, or Jake DeGrom, all those guys. Um, and that's part of how they create that effect. Um, but that's a good way, good little litmus test, just like, am I a candidate? And then, you know, to, to do it, you're actually going to be more on the outside of the baseball than trying to pronate it. So that's, that's another part of the concept is the seams create your movement, your hand doesn't create the right. movement. Um, so you got to get them over that mental hurdle that, the ball can still go the opposite direction of where my hand placement is.